So here's something interesting. The South African news industry is facing cash flow challenges that have meant that they now need to evolve possibly sooner than what they were ready for. But some who lead the way are shaping the next chapter of how South Africans will access their news. But at what cost? News24, a company owned by Media24 and by extension Naspers, continues to dominate South Africa's publishing landscape with 161 million monthly page views and 730,000 plus daily visitors. And when you combine the English and the Afrikaans paying subscribers of these publications, News24 is making around 244 million rand per year in just subscriptions alone. By volume alone, News24 is the biggest news site in South Africa. And they have almost double the number of daily visitors compared to the second most read news publication, Business Tech, which sits at 329,000 daily visits. Now, even with all these numbers, the truth is that the news business was and is struggling to make money to support its existing business model or the old model. See, advertising rands and cents have been for a long time now been shifting from traditional newspapers to digital platforms in a really big way. I know this because I'm in marketing and advertising. This has meant that less money for journalists and news companies is now available for them to run their daily costs. So in August of 2020, News24 got ahead of this and they announced that they would, in the face of these financial challenges, opt for a freemium paywall model. 80% of their content, including breaking news, would remain free. That's what they said. But in-depth, investigative and opinion-based content would be put behind a paywall that would cost 75 rand per month. Actually, it costs more now, four years later. Okay, okay. So what is a paywall? So paywalls are basically like digital access blockers that online publishers like News24 use to restrict full access to their news content. Basically, it's like a digital gate that's used to monetize content either completely or partially by restricting users from accessing certain parts of their website until platforms are paid. Paywalls are most common in subscription-based sites or platforms, but chances are you've experienced paywalls in the most strangest of places, from your favorite brands to your streaming apps and most pervasively in your news viewing online platforms. To understand journalism and its shift, you have to understand the South African news landscape first. Now, the IAB South Africa's July 2024 statistics showed that News24 had the highest readership, as I've obviously said. The IAB South Africa, it's an independent association that represents South Africa's digital industry and a lot of its large online publications. Business Tech is South Africa's largest business publication. They are ranked second with 392,000 daily readers and 28 million monthly page views. I actually read quite a lot of their stuff. More than I do News24 because, you know, they have a lot of paywalls on their stuff. IOL, South Africa's second largest general news publication, actually comes in third in South Africa with 390,000 daily readers and 25 million page views every single month. Daily Maverick, known as a source of South African news based off opinion and investigations, ranked fourth with 365,000 daily readers and 13 million page views every single month. So that's the landscape currently. Actually, let me know which of these do you subscribe to or do you read? So how much does a platform that's the largest, like News24, make from its subscriptions? I'm going to try to break this down a little bit. We need to start in April of 2021 when News24 announced that their website had 31,000 paying subscribers, which equaled 2.3 million rand revenue every single month at the time. By comparison, at the exact same time, the Afrikaans equivalent, Netwerk24, had 70,000 paying subscribers paying 99 rand per month for news content. This was around 7 million rand per month for News24. At last check, News24 now has 100,000 subscribers paying 89 rand per month, bringing in a total of 8.9 million rand every single month and 106 million rand every single year. Even though Netwerk24's paywall subscriptions have declined by 4%, this was last year. They still had 92,000 people who were paying 125 rand per month, which was 138 million rands worth of revenue every single year. 
Actually, a good question is, why do the Afrikaans readers pay more to get their news? It's interesting, but I don't know why. Please, maybe if you know why this is, hit us up in the comments. So combined from its 192,000 subscribers, News24 makes roughly 244 million rand from subscriptions before factoring in things like other sales and other revenue. Those are some proper numbers, but there is a flip side to all of this. Okay, picture this scenario. You're on your computer searching for a particular article or you've clicked in from a link. You're trying to get some hard to find fact or to read a story. And just when you seem to have discovered the exact thing that you're looking for, a paywall pops up and says you need to pay X rands for the next six months or you can save 40% on a one year subscription. Or here's your premium digital offer. Are you already a subscriber? Hmm, no, you're not. Now you're faced with a dilemma of, do you pay or do you leave? And sometimes it's not even that simple. Is it a monthly or a yearly subscription? And they say that you can cancel at any time. Is this article or story or fact important enough for you to pay? That's normally the question that people ask themselves. That's the dilemma that many of us are now being faced with when we're online trying to find or verify news and stories. And a lot of people are just not going to pay. And that's actually what the data is showing us. For instance, let's take the News24 example again. Only 192,000 people pay every single month from an estimated 27 million readers every single month. That's like 0.7% of people who read the news online on that platform actually paying for the news on that platform. Now, the question that remains is do people now regard news lesser as a product that they're not willing to pay for or is the business model and the pricing from companies like News24 a little bit off? Maybe let us know below. So now I start to ask myself, if traditional and digital online media is starting to possibly add a lot more cost and a lot more pricing friction between people and the stories, if this is the case, then where are people going to get their news from? Well, where will they find it? Likely elsewhere, likely or possibly, I hope not, from fake news. But maybe I'm seeing it all wrong. Maybe this is the opportunity for a new age of journalism as well as a new model to rise to redefine the future of opinion-based news. I'm rather conflicted about all of this. On the one hand, subscribers allow news organizations to generate revenue without relying on advertisers or advertising as such because advertisers will also drive what content you see. So therefore, journalists then get paid. On the other hand, the role of journalism is to inform the masses and paywalls neglect the economically disadvantaged in this new business model. It might be good for business now, but into the future, we must also consider this impact on society and their relationship with the news. In order for a paywall to work, you must have journalism that a viewer cannot get anywhere else. This is almost impossible in this new age of the internet. Now, as soon as one other site has this information, someone who's looking for it will choose a site that has the information but less friction. And if you have exclusive stories, they better be good enough for people to pay for because 99% of people will just stop caring rather than to pay to read the story, even if the headline is really that good. But on the other side, an opportunity has presented itself for alternative, credible media to exist, like even platforms like this. See, the thing is that News24 and many other news houses are selling opinions on stories and not the stories themselves. And for a very long time now, they have told people how to react to stories that happened around them. I mean, how many times have you seen journalistic prejudice from mainstream publications around how they cover various topics from corruption to politics and even crime? It's now even a thematic that when you don't see the name or the face of the accused person, they're likely white. And when you see the accused person, they're black. And then the media will hide behind terms like public interest versus the right to privacy. These terms are important. And when used for certain people or groups versus others, they create a mental narrative that sticks 
in the mind of the reader and people are starting to see this. Social and digital media is now more popular than television as the main medium through which younger people are accessing the news. This is the reality. But the newly acquired newsy pedigree of social media is hinged on the continued rise of smartphone access as well, which is not stopping. According to the research report by Reuters Institute of Study of Journalism, of the 18 to 24 year olds who were surveyed across 50,000 people in 26 countries, 28% cited social media as their main news source, compared with 24% who got their news from television. The survey further suggested that 51% of people with online access relied on social media as a news source. On top of that, the rising use of mobile phones to access news is undermining traditional news business models. The study disclosed that Facebook was the most common source used by 44% of all those who were surveyed. They used it to watch, share and comment on the news. Next was YouTube, this platform with 19% with micro-blogging sites like X, formerly Twitter, sitting at around 10%. Although TikTok wasn't mentioned in this study because it's not as recent, I believe that over the years, it's going to cut into the margins of the established media companies as many are getting older and the new generations are going to take over as the bulk of the people who are actually consuming news on these platforms. Very interesting times ahead for everybody. To me, the biggest mistake made by journalism, even though granted it was an easy mistake to make, was not to charge for content on the internet from the beginning. Maybe people would have been okay to pay by now. But obviously, when news organizations first went online, they had no way of knowing how things would evolve and turn out. But when it comes to newspapers, there was always a fee to read this news. Actual newspapers used to cost money. Well, I think they still do. The other side of this is that journalism, in the most part, was very much one way. You would write a story as a journalist and people would read it one way. When social media came about, it opened up the opportunity for stories to be more scrutinized and for there to be two-way communication and even closer proximity to the people who write the stories, the journalists. The old operating system of news and journalism was just not ready for a lot of this change. So when it was tested, it was found wanting. So what you now find is that many people have and are leaving traditional spaces. They're finding spaces that they can engage on stories on when it comes to news and other engagements. Spaces that can be more accountable. The internet has, for good or for worse, lowered the barrier to entry for those who want to contribute to the world of news. People like myself, like us and other people who create, people who want to give a different perspective. I've always understood that news has people behind it and people have feelings and their feelings affect how they write and communicate stories. Like this very story being communicated here. I'm passionate about stories and even more so about how they're told and edited. That's why I started sharing my stories backed by data and stats so that there could be a level of trust and credibility that we would build together, myself and you, the audience. Anyways, what do you think the future of journalism in South Africa looks like? How do you feel about the current paywall business model and other models that are finding expression within the news space? Let's chat about it in the comments. Thank you for watching this video right up until this part. I hope that you found it interesting because it was really interesting for us to make for you. Check out one of these other videos and hopefully they'll be just as interesting as this one. Cheers.